has been felt across Europe, a continent which has really struggled to cope with a huge influx of asylum seekers. In Hungary, clashes between police and migrants on the border with Serbia saw the use of water cannon to disperse the crowds. The country has been accused of treating refugees worse than wild animals after the government rejected an EU quota system to relocate asylum seekers across its member states. The Hungarian people voted in a referendum earlier this month on whether to accept the quotas, with 98% of those who voted rejecting the scheme. The result was declared invalid, though, because of low voter turnout. Well, earlier I spoke to Hungary's Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Seato. I started by asking him if he thought his country would eventually have to take its share of refugees. Well, actually, um, we can't speak about refugees in this context because uh, it's not a refugee crisis what the European Union has been faced with, but a migration crisis. What uh, we Hungarians had to um, experience uh, last year was a uh, mass migration through our country. 400,000 people actually marched through uh, Hungary by violating our border, breaking our regulations, attacking our police, occupying our public um, uh, areas. The right to a safe life is a fundamental human right. But it's not a fundamental human right to pick a country where you would like to live in and in order to get there, just uh, cross uh, borders wherever and whenever you feel like. The Human Rights Watch report that documented cruel and violent treatment by your forces. Yeah, but this is... I mean, One this man, is not for true. example, let me true. tell you, he said... Five or six soldiers took us one by one to beat us. They beat us with everything, with fists, kicks and batons. Is that lies? Yeah, but this is not true. I mean, we were under very heavy uh, accusations after uh, our police uh, answered with voter cannons when, uh, uh, when our policemen were uh, thrown stones and, um, and pieces of concrete for one and a half hours from Serbian uh, territory by the migrants. Do, do we take it seriously that it's normal and acceptable in the 21st century that if a group of people would like to cross Hungary because they want to get to Germany, they, they are allowed to attack our police? If Brussels doesn't back down on forcing you to accept this quota of refugees, do you follow the UK out of the European Union? Of course not, because our place is within the European Union. But freedom of movement is not about illegal migrants, letting illegal migrants enter the territory of the European Union. Bre the Brexit vote was, at its heart, about immigration, taking control of immigration. Do you think that the EU should have made more concessions on freedom of movement to keep the UK in the club, in the EU, is it too late to make those last-ditch concessions now? Well, actually, the British people made their decision. But, you know, I think that Europe, European institutions, let's put it this way, could have done much more in order to help the British government to convince the people to vote in favour of uh, uh, Remain. So should Britain get access to the single market, full, unfettered access to the single market, um, without subscribing to freedom of movement? Well, this is going to be the major issue, I guess, during the uh, concrete talks about exit of, uh, of UK uh, from European Union. Now, if I can speak from the perspective of the interest of my country, you are one of the most important export markets uh, of ours. You are among the top five investors uh, in the country, which means that from our perspective, according to our interest, the cooperation between UK and EU regarding trade, investments and economy must be as free of obstacle as it is possible. So do you mean... No tariffs between the UK and Hungary, between the UK and the rest of the EU? Well, that would be the ideal situation. So, from my perspective, uh, we need a tailor-made solution. So, no Swiss type, no Canadian type, no Norwegian type. We need to look for a tailor-made uh, solution for the cooperation regarding trade, economy and investments between the UK and the EU. And the ideal situation uh, would be, of course, free trade. An absolutely free trade between UK and the EU. Because currently, there's an absolute free trade between UK and the rest of Europe. 90. Peter Siato, thank you very much. So, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, today I can stand here in front of you as a representative of a free and proud nation, a nation which is proud of her traditions, culture, Christianity, and fights for freedom in the past. Mr. President, dear colleagues, obviously there is no need to say here that the world has been facing enormous global challenges, challenges which led to dramatic changes regarding the world order we have been used to recently. Let me just emphasize 
free of these important factors that led to the change of world order. Number one, all of us witness and unfortunately experience the worldwide spread of terrorist organizations. Day by day, we witness the destabilization of some key and vulnerable regions of the world. And day by day, we experience the fact that around 60 to 65 million people globally are on the move or being displaced because of various reasons. So these three factors have led to dramatic changes in the world order. And I think it's not an exaggeration anymore to say that we are in the 24th hour to divert these changes into a positive direction. But in order to reach this target, we have to be successful globally together, all of us, in carrying out free global policy efforts. Number one, we have to eliminate the key factor of global terrorism, namely, we have to eliminate ISIS. Until we finally destroy ISIS, there will be no peace and no stability in the southern and southeastern neighborhood of Europe, namely in the Middle East and in the North African region. Until we finally destroy ISIS, thousands and thousands of people will still be forced to leave their homes. And until we finally destroy ISIS, Christian communities will still be threatened and will be under extremely heavy attacks. And until we finally destroy ISIS, migratory pressure will not decrease on Europe. Number two, we have to eliminate the global network of human traffickers. We have to destroy their business models and we have to admit that these networks have caused death of thousands of innocent people and I guess we all agree that their crimes against humanity must not remain unpunished. And number three, we have to change the migratory policies which inspire people to take the life hazard, which inspire people to violate borders, and which inspire people to move to countries which are multiple thousands of miles away from their homes. And migration and the challenge of migration the country is an extremely where you want to live in is not a fundamental human right. And we have to make clear that there's no excuse for violating borders between two safe and peaceful countries. Mr. President, dear colleagues, regarding Hungary, I am proud to report to you that with the policies we have been carrying out in Hungary, we were successful to contribute to divert the recent global challenges to the right direction. Number one, Hungary is among those 23 countries in the world who send troops to fight ISIS, to fight against ISIS. There are 143 Hungarian men and women who have been taking part in actions against ISIS serving in Iraq as a force protection unit and as trainers of the Peshmergas. We have sent significant amount of ammunition to the Peshmerga army and we have been taking part in the rehabilitation program of the wounded Peshmerga. And we are just about to start to carry out training for the officials of the Iraqi army. In this case, Mr. President, I would like to mention that we urge ICC, the International Criminal Court, to start to investigate crimes committed by ISIS against the Christian communities. We regret and we find it unacceptable that after sending letters to the Prosecutor General of ICC, the no re-election based on this initiative has been made and we are of course sad because of the Security Council was not ready 
to refer the situation in Syria to ICC which organize either. help for such communities when and where it is necessary. Because we want to avoid that these, the cruel crimes uh, committed against Christian communities remain unpunished. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, regarding human trafficking, the Hungarian parliament has adopted stringent regulations against human traffickers, which can serve as best practice in global struggle against smuggling networks. A number three, regarding migration. Dear colleagues, Hungary puts security of Hungarian people to the first place. We have protected our borders so far, and we will not allow mass violation of our borders in the future either. We have to make clear that in the meantime, there are migratory policies all around the world which have failed. Migratory policies which consider every migrant's refugees have failed. Migratory policies which want to force countries to receive thousands of migrants against the will of their own citizens have failed. And migratory policies based on accusation of countries who protect their own borders have failed as well. Mr. President, the uncontrolled and unregulated mass migration offered opportunity for terrorist organizations to send their fighters and to send their terrorists to other countries and continents. The outcome and the consequence of this uncontrolled and unregulated mass migration in Europe is a growing threat of terror and a worsening public security situation. It's, um, it's obvious now that people in Europe expect European politicians to put the restoration of security in Europe on the top of all European policies. Our position, dear colleagues, is absolutely clear. We have to take help where it is necessary.